Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. Let me tell you, it's been a little while since I was this excited about a project. So basically, what we are doing is, we're using up all of our little scraps that we like to keep, and we are making these whimsical house tags. So the idea is that they are tags in a journal. They're fun to make, they look beautiful, and they're also functional because you have all of this writing space and they can be tucked into pockets and, and onto pages and all that sort of stuff. Let me show you. So here is a journal. This one's fully embellished, but let's say, for example, you can have one of these clipped onto a page, something like this with a paper clip, then something like this, perhaps with a paper clip down the bottom, add so much beautiful treasure in a journal. Then you might have little tuck spots like this in there a pocket like this so any way that you would usually use a tag that's what i envisioned for these and then look at all of this beautiful writing space at the back so that's the general idea and i know that i always say this but possibilities are truly endless because all you need basically is the base for the house you need a roof you need some type of a window or windows and a door and they can be any shape they can be any size and you can just go crazy and let your creativity flow. I'm going to show you all of these tags in more detail at the end of the video. But first, I want to create some for you on screen so you can see the process and hopefully get those creative juices flowing. All right, let's begin. The first thing you need to do is get all of your scrap little bits and pieces of paper out and start to get creative. So anything can be uh, the base for the house. Anything can be the roof. Look at this. You know that this is the fun part about this project. Anything can be the door, the window. I was using some punched out shapes for windows and th stuff like that. Look at this. Even just this, such a cool idea for a window. And that's actually quite a nice little house right there. Maybe I'll make this door shorter. So this is a little bit of an un unexpected little house. But you see what I mean? You can just get creative. And it will all start happening. I actually like that. I'm going to pop it to the side. So what I wanted to do is make three houses on camera, excluding this one. So another three and it's so much fun because we can just pick out little bits and pieces and just make this fun little house, right? So I'm going to choose what I'm going to choose my bases first. Okay, so these will be the bases of my houses and I might just trim these larger pieces down. And this one here is just some tea dyed watercolor paper. And now I might just uh, cut some shapes into them. They don't have to be all straight edges. And I'll say this right here at the beginning. Uh, it's very easy to start overthinking things. What goes with what? What kind of a roof would I like? And it was happening to me over and over again with each little new house. And I kept trying to remind myself to just go with the flow. And then with this, uh, we can have a house that's like this. Out of all of the ones that I made, I only made one that's horizontal. I think that might be the right word. Or, you know, going this way rather than this way. And I tend to like these ones better, but, you know, that's another thing that we can do. But I think with this one, I'm just going to change the shape a little bit. And I'm just going to go this way. And, you know, see where it takes me. All right. Now that my bases are ready, I'm just going to go into my pile, maybe pull out some papers for the roof. I think this one looks really nice. And then once again, it can be any shape, any size. It can go any which way. Let's say, I think this one's a bit too long. So I might even just trim the top of, I might even like do this, you know? Okay. That's that one. This one, I might go with brown because this paper has green and brown in it. So I'm going to go with this for a roof. And I'm not going to overthink it. I'm just going to cut any which shape. I'm just going to do whatever, you know. Here we go. Some weird shape. Looks kind of like a mushroom. And, you know, you can move it around and then trim bits off, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to leave that there for now. And now for this one here, I'm going to go with this paper. And I might do 
I don't know, maybe an, a, like a little mushroom. I wouldn't know how to do a mushroom shape, but let's give it a try. That's not really a mushroom shape, but I think it will do. And I might, might bring this one here to play as well. And before I continue, I'm just going to ink some edges. So this is one of those projects that has the potential of getting overwhelming quickly because of the endless, endless, endless possibilities from roof shapes to colors you're going to use, what kind of windows, you want hearts, you want round, you want square, you want rectangle. It just doesn't stop. Do you want to doodle on them? Do you want to watercolor, add, add paint, add bling, add lace? It keeps going. So I think it's important just to keep it basic. Or like maybe work on one at a time. I thought maybe for this one here I'm gonna add a little bit of stencil or stenciling. Here we go, I think that looks nice. And now I'm going to uh, just maybe add some windows and doors and then start gluing things down. And once again just playing around trying not to overthink it and I'm telling you it's hard. And after a while, they kind of start looking like faces. And when, when you move, like if you move things a certain way, the expression of the house changes. This kind of looks like, maybe it depends what you see. Maybe different people see different things. I see kind of maybe fear or something in this one. So then, you know, I play around with the placement of the windows and things like that. Now, every way that I do, I want it to be whimsical and happy and stuff, you know? That's what I want. Maybe that looks a little bit better. So I'm just playing around, trimming bits here and there, adding little bits, you know, just to see how things are going to look. Because this house can have a window like this, it can have a window that can be the upstairs, this can be the downstairs, you know, just adding little bits and pieces. The papers don't have to match at all, like I have these two, don't, they clash and stuff, but it looks fine when we're making whimsical houses. Now I want to add something here. And I wonder how it would look if I just punch out some little heart shapes. This one's pretty cool. It looks really, I just wanted to show you up close. It's got, a, oh, look at that. How good does that look? It matches my nails too. But when I put it down here, it kind of looks really dark and black, but it's not. So I don't know. I kind of like that. Look at that. It just, it looks like a, a, a face. And then for some reason I really like this piece here and what does it represent? I don't know. It doesn't have to represent anything. It can be a chimney. Maybe we can have it like that. I like that. A little chimney. So I'm quite happy with this one here. But I'm just going to finish off these ones. I'm just wondering what kind of a window would be nice for this mushroom looking one. Maybe, maybe I can just do random, random shapes. I don't know. Let's try it. I'm not entirely sure about this random shape ones, but don't know until I try and anything goes and stop overthinking, right? I'm just reminding myself, so I don't know. I don't mind it. I like it. I'm going to just keep it like that. And also, don't forget, we can have little door handles, something like that. It looks like a cigar now, but you know, give them little personalities. There's a little doorknob. So perhaps I could do some white pen doodling on this roof or I can add washi tape or I can add stickers or like I'm just looking for things that are on my desk just just for some ideas you know I can just add little things but it doesn't have to be done at this step. So now what I want to do is kind of glue everything down. The way that I've done it is I would have my little house. I really like this one, for example. And then I would take a photo, which I can't do now because I'm filming with my phone. And then I would start gluing down. So I start with the roof. And because I'm going to be sewing, I don't need to glue anything down perfectly. The things that I want sew, for example, I might not sew around this window here. And then, you know, I would make sure that it's glued down completely. I would have that roof on a slant like that a little bit. Here we go. And now I get rid of the pieces that are sticking out. Okay, so I've moved the other ones out of the way. And now I know I definitely will not be sewing around the hat. So I'm going to glue them down at this step. And now I'm deciding I'm going to sew around everything else. So I still want it to stay in place. So I'll just add a little bit of glue stick. 
and obviously if you're not going to be sewing around oh this looks good too this side if you're not going to be sewing around then you make sure everything is glued down properly there we go and now there was this little piece as well how did i want it like this and there we go P uh, things are glued on you can see the back and now i am going to take this to my sewing machine and i'm going to sew around whatever i feel like sewing around i'm not going to go around the whole thing because that comes later i'm just going to sew down these little maybe this the windows and the door and then i'm going to move on okay look at this how fun does this look and i didn't even go into my laces and blings and paints and watercolors and all of that this is just paper and sewing and sewing of course is optional i'm gonna get rid of all of these strings all right so if all of the bits are glued down and nothing is coming off and you can see here at the back now we need to hide all of this sewing at the back and in order to make it a tag, of course, I am now going to back it on with some tea dyed. This is actually cardstock. It doesn't have to be cardstock. It can just be regular paper. So because I'm going to be sewing around the whole thing, I don't have to worry about... I forgot what I don't have to worry about. I tend to worry about everything, so... Oh, I don't have to worry about getting, you know, gluing this down perfectly. This is just to keep it in place for me while I take it to my sewing machine. All right, so that's it. I've got obviously my, you know, blank side is on the other side. You can just use blank piece of paper. I just like to use, use up things, okay? So here we go. Now I'm going to go to my sewing machine again and sew all around. I might do that on camera. Why not? I'm going to sew all around all of the edges. So the roof here, all the way up the top. And then I can either go through my chimney here or what I might do is just go up this way, come back down, maybe even through. I might even just go straight through anyway uh, i'm gonna go and do that now and then cut everything out here we go i know it's difficult to see but i'm at my sewing machine not that you really need to see anything i'm starting at this corner and i'm just gonna go a straight stitch all the way around And here we go now I just have to cut it out which is pretty self-explanatory but I want to show you something when you have like uh, you know these little bits it's kind of hard once you get to that root to that point here once you get here it's hard to turn your scissors around I mean it can be done but it's it's quite difficult so what I do is I cut it from here and just obviously stop in the corner and when they meet it just kind of comes out just a little tip to make that corner cutting out easier and like over here as well you can see this tiny little corner here might be a little bit tricky to cut but I'll come in from one side and then come in from this side because we want to have nice clean cuts there we go perfect this one here is the tricky one I might just try and do it in one go here we go good and here we go so now I can I really love it and what I'm realizing now is that the more color the better I was kind of sticking to more I don't know monotone kind of colors that go together I don't know even this one's quite nice I'll show them all to you in detail at the end but what I wanted to say I'm not going to do it on this one but I wanted to show you for the chimney what I've done here is I added an eyelet and some ribbon so that looks like smoke coming out of the chimney really really cute so that's another thing that can be done there or like even something like this add a little bit of some, some type of fabric maybe something like this kind of like you know like we do for tags a, a tag topper type thing up there you know something like that anyway and then here this is the back you can see here I've sewn through that chimney over here I have sewn around the chimney and then you know it's a tag for your journal and I just noticed something on, on my desk this was just sitting here just like this look how cool this looks this is what I mean I just want to demonstrate that really anything you do and add I don't know looks looks fine this looks fine let's see if I do a heart here like that yeah that looks okay it's not very visible in the in the video but you know i think all of these things look good but i like to i don't know uh, keep it a little bit simple so 
I think I'm gonna leave this one as it is. The next one I'm gonna do is this one. I'm not gonna do everything on camera. I might just finish them off, off camera and then come back and show you. So we can play around with, you know, how we want the roof to be. This kind of looks like a hat if I put it this way. And then we can have the door ha on the side like that. Let's see what's gonna happen if I move the eyes, or I mean the window, see? I keep saying eyes because I keep seeing faces. Like it completely changes when we, if we do it this way, for example, I don't know. I keep seeing a face. It doesn't look as scary as it did before. Let's see here. Sometimes they can look angry. Let me show you by what I mean by faces. Look at this one. I can see an, a man, uh, maybe again with a cigar here and wearing a hat, for example. This one here looks a bit cuckoo. Maybe not a face as such, but just, I don't know, a bit crazy-ish. And this one here looks quite happy. Again, I keep seeing that cigar and the eyes. I don't know, it seems very happy. And then this one. Ah, it's like a scream. House of horrors, maybe. So yeah, but how annoying was that scream I just did? Okay, so as we know, I'm going to glue this roof down first. And then I'm going to go with the eyes and the door here and the handle. And then I might do some sewing. I might not. We'll see. Same with this one here. I'm just going to do it all off camera because I don't want to bore you with, you know, you get the idea that we're gluing these parts first and when once the front is completely finished, then we add the backing and we sew around or just glue. So I'm going to do this off camera and then I'll come back. Okay, I'm working on this one now and I've already glued the windows down and the door and the door handle and this up here. And now I'm thinking this, these pieces, maybe I, I will add them somewhere like this. I might do something like this actually, I really like that. Maybe I'll make these edges a bit more fun. Maybe something like that. And here we go, so I've added some stitching here on the windows. And it kind of looks black and white because I used white thread on top and black one down the bottom. The black one is thicker so it's coming through. It really looks cool. And then I just did white around the door. And now I'm going to glue this on top of this. So all of the front is done and now I'm going to go back to my sewing machine and sew all around. I'm going to use white thread so you can see it on this brown roof here. Here we go, all sewn. They really don't take long at all. And now to cut it out. And here we go, that one is done. And I mean, we can keep going with this. I was just thinking maybe adding a little something more that I, I like it you see see what I mean I think I'm gonna add that there why not glue down I like it and that's the back beautiful little tag for a journal that we can write on all right so this mushroom house has clearly had some questionable mushrooms and I'm not happy with it I really don't like how messy this looks and now I have to try and find a way to fix it so I'm gonna see what I can do I wonder if this is going to make any difference. Let's see. Kind of does look a little bit better, I think. Maybe if I add a little sticker on top. There we go. I've glued it down. I don't know. Maybe I can add some doodling or something. Let's see. I'm just trying to offset from that craziness over here. Maybe add some more little stickers. Maybe it's best to leave it. Yes, I think I'm going to leave this one. It's not great. It's not too bad either, so that's that one. All right, and the last one is done. I'll show you what I did. I just did a, added a little bit of doodling down the bottom and a heart here on the chimney. Maybe I overdid it with the hearts, but I don't want to overthink it too much. So I'm going to leave that one as it is. I think out of the four that I made today, this one is my favorite one and it probably goes most with the whimsical houses theme. These are the backs, looks cool. And when they're next to each other, they all look great. But this is my favorite, then this one, and then maybe this one. I don't actually mind it now that I'm looking at it. And this is probably my least favorite, but the point is, to have fun and to just go with the flow and not to overthink it and use up all of your little bits and pieces and keep adding little things and just have fun. Overall, I'm quite happy with how these look. And this is not my strong suit, this type of thing. 
this is out of my comfort zone. So I feel like the more I do this, the more it will come with ease, I guess. So I'm going to show you all the other ones that I have, just in a little bit more detail so you can get some more ideas perhaps. This one here has lace. It's the only one that I've put lace. I've got some hearts here for door handles, a little number here, some hearts here, and just all these, you know, different windows, different, different sized windows. You've seen this one. I've got two circles for windows, overlaying. It doesn't have to look like a traditional door, you know. Very simple, this one. You've seen this one, the old man with the hat. Pretty cool. I actually really like this one as well. It's got an irregular roof and it has this chimney up here as well and this long narrow door and then two narrow windows on the sides. Really nice color combination on this one as well. I like it. Then here again, I have some ribbon down here. Very simple roof base, some windows, a door and doorknob. And then you can just play around to your heart's content. I really like this one as well. I have this round door and then I have another little piece of paper underneath. Some windows, very simple roof. This one here on the roof, I've done a little bit of uh, all of this different type of sewing. And then I did these windows with the sewing and this round door. This one here has three windows and this dome kind of shape roof and this big door, nothing special, just six pieces of paper put together to create this little house. I can go crazy with this one, adding little things in windows, maybe little birds or some stickers or something. I'm a bit crazy with hearts, uh, so uh, uh, straight away I think hearts, but then this one here, quite a bit going on. I have some washi tape here that's pretty cool to use, especially if it's got this golden foiling. And then this window here and then a window here I drew this on and then this door and a little heart up the top so just little details I have some skipped stitching here but that's fine it's a whimsical house so anything goes this one here very simple again just a heart here some windows door and then this random strip there in the middle of the door with some zigzagging the details are difficult to see, but you can see I have some white thread and then I have black thread all around. So I was playing around with that kind of thing as well. Then there's this mushroom one and this is just red paper and then I have these sticky dots and I just kind of glued them on, make it look like a mushroom, little window with some stickers there, just two pieces of paper stuck down together and then a sticker to make that look like a window and a little doorknob sticker here. And then this one here, you know, play around with, again, washi tapes and then some sticker. Oh, happy day, it says, why not? And then these windows, just adding stickers pretty much. And here you can see I've layered washi tape on top of this scrapbook paper. Just to make it more colorful and whimsical looking. This is the only one that I've done this way. All of them are done vertically this way, but very simple. This is one of the first ones that I've made. Then this one here, again, just playing around with, you know, those bottom strip ends from large papers, just gluing them down, large door, you know, I think you get the idea now. Here, I've just played around with stamp that says dreams, two doors kind of overlaying each other. And then here, this little detail with the bird, you see, it's a bird sticker. This one you have seen, I did the chimney with the eyelet up the top and this domed roof and hearts for windows and this door, I quite like this one. This, this one here is my least favorite one. It's not bad, it looks kind of like a lighthouse, I guess. And it has a door and a window and the roof is too small, but it's fine. Then this is the screen one, I don't mind it. Maybe I can add something in the windows to make it less screamy. And then this is the first one that I made. I just had some, this is how I came to this idea. I just had some little strips of paper, like little ripped papers on my desk. And this was left over from a previous project. And I just thought I'm gonna make a little house. And I have a thing for these little houses. So I just did it. And I really like how it looks. And then in the windows, you can see I've done sewing and then just use a Sharpie to create that window look. And there it is. And of course, they're all, most of them are backed, backed onto cardstock, but it doesn't have to be cardstock. This one here is avocado dyed paper. And here I have an eyelet, so I can actually have a little something up there as well. 
but the idea is there are little special things that you add to a journal in pockets and things like that little packs and there are tags just like your normal tags these are a bit more i don't know a bit more fun fun to make fun to see look at fun to use what do you guys think let me know down in the comments below i think out of all of them it's actually really hard to say because i like most of them and the more i look at this one the more i actually like it I don't know maybe this one's my favorite maybe this one's my favorite it's really hard to tell I can very easily tell which one is my least favorite but I cannot tell which one is my favorite favorite so not that it matters anyway I hope you feel inspired I hope you're going to go and make some whimsical houses and you know you can have them really small I, I tend to I tend to make them large for some reason, but they can be tiny little whimsical houses. That would be even even cooler. It, still the same amount of work, but they would look so cute. I hope you have fun. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!